I came up through touring and which is great because that's really how we built built G. Um, streaming wasn't all the way around when when G got started and we weren't we damn sure weren't on the radio yet. So it was just a lot of touring, touring, college parties, um, college shows, basement shows, backyard shows. And what I would do after I would see like Wayne on tour doing these sold out arenas, I would always call G and Matt. Matt's my business partner who I also co-manage G with. I would always call G and Matt like, yo, holy f this is what this is how Wayne is touring. This is what he's doing with his band. This is the sound equipment they're using. There's a fucking guy out here named Drake who's crazy and there's this chick named Nikki and there's the whole young money coming out and doing two songs and 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 would just just take all the knowledge I was seeing there and filter it back to G and Matt back home. And um yeah, and that's how I got started. And like Courtney and Steak both said, relationships and reputation are so important because each each tour stop I went, I said, great, this is a, an opportunity for me to not only be a great tour assistant, but establish myself as as an asset, as an executive, as a somebody who needs to meet every single person in this venue from the ticket taker to the promoter to if I have access to the president of the venue, you know, just because I know God willing, I'll hopefully be back here in a year or so or two or three or whatever with my own client. Um, so just like a lot of information flow and, but touring is how I got my um, nuanced come up. Yeah. Indeed. I'm glad you shared that story because self-establishment and, and relationships are key in terms of breaking yourself as a manager into a yeah. place where people can respect you. And then also paving roads for your artists. So Courtney, right. Talk to us about added value. So when you were making that transition from a creative into a manager, what key things did you pull on or how did you talk to yourself or position yourself to be able to be someone that could represent an artist? It's, you have to have the, the drive and the willpower. I, one, of, one quote that always sticks with me is, you, you have to know how to turn a no into a yes. Because when you walk in rooms, people are going to always tell you no. So you have to have that drive and that willpower and that finesse to be able to turn that no into a yes. And one, one, once I got my, my wings and figured out that I know how to talk to people, I know how to communicate with people, but I also know how to represent talent. Because be, being a manager, it's a very, it's a very selfless job. We we are we we dedicate our whole lives to looking after someone's not just their career but also their livelihood as well. Um, the, the the three of us on this panel, I know that we are managers that that aren't in the office looking at emails. We're actually out there doing the work, and that's something that that separates us from the rest of the pack. And that's why we've been blessed to do this for so long because we've really been in it. We really and, and 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 we don't have egos. Right now, if if Khalid asked me to carry his bag at the airport, I'll carry the bags. It's 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 as simple as that. Not having an ego and being able to to to, to do whatever you need to do to make sure your act is supported and to make sure that they're flourishing. Yeah. 